will add his blessing to the reading of his own precious truth. In Glasgow, away back in the year of 1868, a lady by the name of Elizabeth Clefan wrote a poem, wrote a poem that appeared in one of the local newspapers. During that time, the great evangelist D. L. Moody and Ira Sankey were conducting missions in Glasgow. Ira Sankey was Moody's song leader. And he reached for the newspaper just for something to read, for he had to go somewhere that day on a train, Ira Sankey. And then he came to this poem and was intrigued by the poem. And when he read the poem sitting on that train, Ira Sankey himself thought he could put a tune to it. And in that train journey, Ira Sankey penned a tune for this poem. That evening, D. L. Moody preached on the parable of the lost sheep. Instead of closing with a hymn, he asked Mr. Sankey to step forward and to bring the meeting to a closing song. Ira Sankey felt very burdened to sing the poem to the tune that he had written in the tree in that earlier that day. And Sankey got up to sing, and he began to sing these words. There were ninety and nine that safely lay in the shelter of the fold, but one was out on the hills away, far off from the streets of gold. And in one of the verses we read these words, None of the ransomed ever knew how deep were the waters crossed or how dark was the night that the Lord passed through ere he found the sheep that was lost. At the end of Moody or Sankey singing that hymn or that poem, streams of sinners came to the front. D. L. Moody said that night, my sermon wasn't sanctified by the power of God that night. He says, Sankey's singing of that hymn was in power. And it drew the sinners to Christ that evening. It's that little line tonight, this morning, child of God, where it says, none of the ransomed ever knew how deep were the waters crossed or how dark was the night that the Lord passed through ere He found the sheep that was lost. And yet, child of God, it was for you and it was for me. And unsaved one in this meeting this morning, it was for you, and it was for me, that he went through the deep waters where there was no standing, and entered through the darkness of the night. And you know, friend, when that poem speaks of the depths and the darkness. No human, I tell you, could ever fathom the darkness. No human could ever fathom the depths that the Lord passed through that evening on Calvary's hill. I, 
and the darkness of Gethsemane. You see, God's message this morning takes you and it takes me to the Garden of Gethsemane. And here's my text this morning. It's verse number 36. It says there, And then cometh Jesus with them unto, and here's my text, a place called Gethsemane. You know the name Gethsemane this morning means olive press. It means it was the place where olives were crushed, crushed in a press to bring forth oil, oil for healing. And if there ever was a place where Christ was crushed, crushed mentally, crushed emotionally, crushed spiritually, it was at a place Call Gethsemane. Oh, none of us ransomed ones will never fathom the sea this morning. Will never fathom the darkness of Gethsemane. Then came Jesus. with them on to a place called Gethsemane. For the child of God, for you, yes, and for me, there'll be many times in life when you and I will find ourselves in what I would call our Gethsemane. And I know this morning our Gethsemane would never compare to His Gethsemane. And child of God, we can find our time and we can find ourselves in that place where we can be crushed mentally. and where we can be crushed emotionally, and where you and I could be crushed spiritually. The child of God can find themselves, we can find ourselves in our gifts and them. Very quick, very sudden, very unexpectedly. And you know, child of God, this morning, I wonder this morning, are you in Gethsemane? Life, some dark shadow has come over your life. I'm telling you, Gethsemane was a dark place for the Lord Jesus. It wasn't because it was nighttime there. Oh, I'll tell you, there was something made Gethsemane darker than the night. It was the shadow of the old cross that lay before him. And I wonder this morning, is there somebody here And a shadow of some cross has came over your life. That God is asking you to bear. And for to help you this morning to embrace 
and to get you through this morning your gifts enemy. The Lord Jesus wants to take you into his gifts enemy. A place called Gethsemane. When we look at his Gethsemane this morning, I'll tell you what you'll find. It was an unbearable place. Do you know what we read in verse 38? My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. And in verse 37, the moment he entered, we read, and he began to be sorrowful and very, very heavy. Gethsemane. A place of anguish, a place of agony. And for the Lord Jesus that night in Gethsemane, it was a dark place in more ways than one. Because the shadow of the cross came upon him. When I see the Lord Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane, what I see this morning, what I see, I see the Lord Jesus in all his humanity. And you know this morning, every time you see the Lord Jesus in his humanity, When you see him being sorrowful, and you see him being heavy, and you see him being so, oh, oh, so sorrowful even unto death, you see the humanity side of the Lord Jesus. And every time the Lord Jesus, you can see the humanity side of him. And you remember, and you can point out times when the devil came in those moments. You remember in the wild wilderness when the Lord Jesus felt the pangs of hunger after 40 days, then cometh the devil. The devil's not extinct, child of God. The devil's real. Maybe there's someone here this morning on some cross. Maybe it's sorrow. Maybe it's loneliness. Maybe it's sickness. Maybe it's uncertainty. Maybe it's to do with your employment. But that shadow that lies before you, it seems so difficult. It seems so unbearable. And you'll notice it's during those times the devil comes. He came to the Lord Jesus. And you see, when the devil comes, he begins to play mind games with you. You know, the time he was in the wilderness, he said, If thou be the Son of God, will prove yourself and command these stones to be made into bread. I want to say something this morning. Do you see when you're in Gethsemane and you're being crushed, I can tell you the devil will come and try and play mind games with you. Remember that day on Calvary? As the Lord Jesus hung upon the cross, the devil cried that day loudly. He cried loudly through the lips of the crowd that were gathered there. And they said, If thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross, and we'll believe ye. Child of God, I want to warn you this morning. God wants to warn you. 
when you find yourself in that place, that dark place this morning, when you're being crushed emotionally, and you're being crushed mentally, and you're being crushed spiritually, listen, the devil will come. And it's during those dark moments the devil will play main games. In Gethsemane's garden, the Lord Jesus engulfed with anguish and grief. Satan done everything in his power to get him to back out from going to the cross. Here's a lesson for every one of us. And here's a lesson for me. I had to learn it in the study. Do you see this incoming week? It could see a dark, unbearable cross coming into your life. You mightn't be in Gethsemane this morning, but I'll tell you, you could be in it before the week's out. And the shadow of some dark cross may engulf you with anguish that it will make it almost unbearable to bear. A place called Gethsemane, a place, an unbearable place. I'll tell you something else, it was an unanswerable place. What crushed the Lord Jesus more is what crushes a lot of Christians. Do you know what crushes a lot of Christians? When you're praying and heaven seems like brass. Three times the Lord Jesus prayed, verse 39, verse 42, verse 44. Three times he closed his eyes. Three times he prayed earnestly. Three times he opened his eyes. And the shadow was still there. Many times have you prayed, dear? Many times have you prayed, brother? Some shadow in your life and you've been praying and you've been praying. And the shadow's still there. Let me say something to you this morning, child of God. It's not, it's not that your prayer has been unheard. Oh, God hears the cries of his people. But this is what Gethsemane teaches me. This is what it teaches me. Gethsemane is the place where our prayers are not answered in the way that we would like them to be answered. That's a good lesson to learn in Gethsemane. When I look at the Lord Jesus and Him and His Gethsemane, and I listen to Him praying, you know, The Lord Jesus teaches me that Gethsemane is the place where we have to learn that our prayers aren't always answered in the way in which we like them to be answered. But I'll tell you this, child of God, God it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that God doesn't understand your anguish. And it doesn't mean that God has abandoned you in your agony. And the lesson is this. God understands how you feel even though this morning you don't understand yourself. God understands. How many times, child of God, have you been on your face
heaven was silent. I hear the Lord Jesus praying, but I witness that heaven is silent. Heaven wasn't deaf till his cry, heaven was silent. I'll tell you this, God is never silent. God is never deaf this morning to the cries of his redeemed. Sometimes God be silent, but you listen, child of God. This is God's word to you this morning. This isn't me. God is never deaf to our prayers. Sometimes he be silent. Maybe that's what you need to learn this morning. Ah, oh, you've prayed. Yes, and you've wept. And God has been silent, but listen, dear, he hasn't been deaf to you. He knows. I'll tell you something now, friend. God knew where Christ was. The Father knew exactly where he was. And God knows where you are. And God knows this morning. God knows where you are. And I'll tell you this, God knows your prayer. And God hears your prayer. And listen to me. God knows what's best. God doesn't leave himself without a reason. We all know, yes, we all know the reason of the shadow that came across Christ's night, that night in Gethsemane. The shadow of the cross that night in Gethsemane was the way forward for Christ. And whatever shadow looms over you, child of God, or may loom over you this week, or may loom over me, it's God's way forward. God's way forward. Whatever way it may lead us this morning, you remember this. God knows. An unbearable place, an unanswerable pl place. I'm going to co continue very briefly this morning. It was an unreachable place. You know the three disciples who were taken that little bit further. They couldn't stick it, you know. They couldn't stay with Christ in prayer. Do you know why? Because they couldn't reach or understand or come near the sorrows that he was called to bear. And when we find ourselves, child of God, in our Gethsemane, you'll find that even the very nearest and the dearest to you and the nearest and the dearest to me will never be able to reach us. You can try. And you'll often find, as I have found, even those nearest and dearest will get tired. And will leave you like the three left the Lord Jesus. Pray alone. Wonder are you alone this morning? 
your gifts enemy could be in your home. Yes, enemy could be your home. Friends, the call for a while, but the soon stop call. The soon stop coming. But here's the lovely thought this morning. When you and I find ourselves in our gifts enemy, the Lord Jesus who endured his can reach us in ours. 12th of May, 1984, Ivan Hill, a part-time member of the Ulster Defence Regiment, walked into the pig house to feed pigs. Two gunmen walked in behind him and murdered him. It was a Saturday morning. And me and my father were just driving past as it happened, and we never heard a thing, because I remember my father ringing me at work and say, did you see anything about Helens when we were driving past? And we never saw a thing. The next night was Sunday night, and I remember standing on the street at the wake, and I remember the hearse coming onto the street, bringing Ivan home in the coffin. There was one man that sticks out in my memory to this very morning. His name was John McNeil. I could see John McNeil yet standing with a tray of sandwiches and pastry in his hands and tears flooded down his cheeks. You see, his son, my friend, was murdered the year before. Cecil, 22 years old, sitting in his car outside work, the riddled him. And I remember my father and me going up to hell, and that's what you called Ivan's wife, and was, we conveyed our sorrows or our sympathies. But John McNeil, he was different. John just handed the tray of sandwiches, whatever he had in his hands, and he threw his arms around hell, and he says, Hell, I understand, I feel in your pain. They done this to my son last year. And I've had to watch them, I had to watch them bringing my son home in a coffin. And I understand, John said, your pain. And child of God, it's the same with you and me. The Lord Jesus understands our pain because he has been in Gethsemane. And he understands your anguish and mine when we face our Gethsemane. Oh, friend, a place called Gethsemane, have you been there? But I'll tell you, you might be there sooner rather than later. I want to finish with this one, very important. The place called Gethsemane was, a, it was an undeniable place. Christ couldn't deny that the cross and its shadow was the way forward. That's why it remained, even though the Lord Jesus prayed, the Lord Jesus knows what it is to pray in heaven to be silent. Maybe this morning that you are facing a cross, Aye, and you've prayed, you've wept. You learn this this morning. God wills the shadows as much as He wills the sunshine.
When I look at the Lord Jesus in his yes enemy. It's good to sit down and watch the Lord Jesus. Never mind listening to preachers, you watch the Lord Jesus. And I watch the Lord Jesus in his yes enemy. And I see him. Even the shadow of the cross as it loomed over him. Do you know what he did in Gethsemane? He surrendered to the will of the Father. It's the place where we learn to surrender. And it's the place where we have to learn to say, not my will, but thine be done. But the Lord wants us to look now just beyond Gethsemane, beyond the shadow. There's an empty cross. Beyond the shadow and beyond Gethsemane, there's an empty tomb. Because he obeyed and surrendered in his Gethsemane, it brought the greatest victory that this world has ever known. And if you're in Gethsemane this morning, and the shadow of some cross looms over. Surrender that shadow. And surrender yourself. He knows. He cares. He understands. May God bless His Word for our hearts this morning. Seven hundred and thirty.